Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and solve a 2015 AP Civics B Mechanics free response problem in the second one. What I encourage you to do is go ahead and try this problem yourself. It's on the AP website. You'll find it there. Um, and then check back on this video and watch. Um, we'll go through like why things are and also the AP squared rubric. Cool. So now that you've already looked at this problem yourself, let's go ahead and chat about it together. I'm going to go ahead and label a couple of things. So we have our dirt down here, which is a mass of 0 0.02 kilograms. The block up here is 0 0.1 kilograms. Um, let's see, anything else I want to label? Oh, right here when it reaches the top of the dart, this, it's just going 100% horizontal um, right before it strikes the block. Okay, so to me, this looks like we're searching for A looking from this point right here. I always label my two points I'm looking at to this point right here. This looks like a good, good old constant acceleration projectile free fall problem. So let's go ahead and look at it. So we'll have x um, and y direction. So it's 10 meters per second. Let's see. Um, so we have, this is going to be 10 sine of 30 degrees, which is going to be 5 meters per second. And then that, that's v y. v x is going to be 10 cosine of 30, which is going to be 8.66, which if they're just doing two sig figs, I guess I can round that to 8.7 meters per second. Cool. And again, at this highest point, we know that the y velocity is zero because it's at the max point, and the x velocity is 8.7 meters per second, and it's all due to the x velocity. So our answer to A is just going to be 8.7 meters per second. And this is just worth one point for getting the correct answer. So that's just again out of one, and it's just one point for your answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at B. So we want the horizontal distance B between the launching point of the dart and a point on the floor directly below the block. Okay, so we are going to want, oh, they already labeled it for us. Beautiful. We want that to be. I'm going to go ahead and do it up here. So again, let's look at the x direction. Let's look at the y direction. I'm going to say up and down is the y direction. Horizontal, I'm going to say is the x direction. We're again, we're looking from those two yellow points. So speed, distance, time, and y is vi, vf, a, delta, dx, delta, t. Let's see. So vi is going to be 5 meters per second. Vf is 0, acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Uh, the horizontal distance C, that's what we want to find. Our speed is 8.7, or I'll put 8.66 here, just it's good to have more digits. Um, cool. So we want to find D. It looks like we're going to need to find T, which again, that's the same T in the X and Y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and say, that's our question mark. So I'll pick my constant acceleration equation. So that looks like it's Vf equals Vi plus a times delta t. So vf is 0. Let's see. So again, vf is 0. vi is 5. Acceleration is negative 10 times delta t. So let's see. Delta t, we solve for that, is going to be 5 over 10, which is 0.5 seconds. OK, so we got our good old time. Now we can just use, we want the horizontal distance. So let's just use the x, where that is essentially um, speed equals distance over time, so 8.66 equals d over 0 0.5, and I get d to be 4.33 meters. Cool. Let's go, through, go ahead and go through the rubric for this one. So b is just out of two points. Uh, so for this one, you're going to get one point for the correct time, so you use the y direction to find that. If you use g is 9.8, you'll get 0 0.15 seconds of the time. Either of those is going to be just fine. Um, and then you get essentially one point for using essentially speed equals distance over time in the x direction, or you could say vx equals distance over time in the x, plugging in the correct values for this and this, and getting the distance to be 4.33 meters. So that's one point. If you use g as 9.8 meters, you will get 4.4 meters for this. So either of those would be totally fine. Cool, let's go on to the next time. So now we want to find the speed of the block just after the dark, excuse me, just after the dark strikes. Oh, this is going to be fun. I love a good problem like this. Okay, so we have the good old dark, um, and then we have our block. My first thing, when everything's collide, I draw before and after pictures. Afterwards, they are just going off together, and they are stuck together. So this is going to be a velocity of, sorry, it's a mass of 0.1 and 0.02, so it's going to be a 0.12 kilogram mass. Again, that's my before and after ratio. So let's look at it. This totally looks like this is going to be a good old momentum problem. Everything's collide. Momentum is a great way to do it. So momentum initial equals momentum final. 
let's see. So initially we have mass of the dart times velocity of the dart plus mass of block times velocity of block equals together their afterwards instant after the collision they are together so let's go ahead and plug in numbers so the dart is what 0.02 times we know that velocity is 8.66 at the highest point let's not use the rounded six big one right now mass of the block is what 0.1 times zero equals they're stuck together afterwards times we both cool go ahead and do so this term essentially doesn't matter um, because that's just at rest so you don't even have to write it down initially V bolt is going to be, I got 1.44 meters per second. Cool. Let's go through the rubric one. Okay. So you're going to get one point for the center of mass equation. Correct. So if, sorry, oh, I can't talk. One point, your momentum equation is like you're identifying that we're going to use conservation of momentum. You get one point for that. Um, now let's go ahead and look. You get one point for recognizing that it is a completely inelastic collision, meaning they both stick together afterwards. So if you have one term afterwards, that is going to be one point. Now you get one point for essentially plugging in the right masses and velocities into this. If you do have the same masses and velocities as me, didn't make a silly mistake earlier, you will get this is your answer and that's worth one point. If you did a silly mistake earlier and used like the wrong velocity right here, but your answer for V both was consistent, you would still get that point. So again, that part C is worth three points. Um, great, let's go on to the next one. Oh, this looks fun and tricky. So calculate the angle theta through which the dart and block on the string will rise before coming momentarily to rest. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. This is going to be a fun little beast. Okay, so what we have for this, so it go ahead, everything starts right here. It is initially moving at the velocity of 1.44 meters per second right after the collision, and that's when they're together. It'll go up to some height right here. We do not necessarily, I was sloppy, sorry. We do not necessarily know what that height is, but it'll go up to some height right there. Cool. So, and again, the dirt is still within the block, and we want to find that angle theta. Okay. Anytime things are changing, I, and I've done these problems before, I know this height right here is going to be helpful. Um, so, anytime things are changing masses, changing velocities, sorry, not masses, changing velocities and changing heights, I love conservation of energy. So let's go ahead and use conservation of energy. So we're comparing essentially this point right here to this point right here. And I'm going to say this level right here is height equals zero. So that's considered ground level. So initially to me, it looks like they have all kinetic energy. When they get to the highest point, it is going to be all gravitational potential. Energy. When it people are momentarily coming to rest, walk at the highest point, that means it'll be zero. So Ke is both of them together. So it's mass is full, velocity is both squared equals what? Mass of both times g times h. Cool. So we have what? 1 half times 1.44 squared equals g is 10 times h. Do some good old math and we get to be 0 0.104 meters. Okay. So that's what we get h. I'm going to box it just because that's going to be important along the way. So now let's go ahead and think about it. What is the length of this string? So we know the string length right here. That is 1.2 meters. So those two solid black lines are both 1.2 meters. We know that H is 0.104. Which I'm going to go ahead and draw that in a different color. I'll do that in green. So this is 0.104, which I'll go ahead and label this distance right here is 0.104, while the whole distance was 1.2. So great. So now we can do some fun old math, and I'll call that our blue section we essentially want to find. So we want to find this section right here is going to be helpful. Um, so we can do some good old math. Sorry, that's just out of the way. I don't know. Okay, sorry about it. My computer did a funky thing, but we'll be okay for now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at this. So again, we are finding that height right there, which is going to be the difference of 1.2 minus 0.104, which I get for that. What do I get? 1.096 meters. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at this picture. So I'm going to highlight it in gray. So this triangle right here, we essentially know what this is. So this is 1.2 meters. We want to find this angle theta. And this right here we know is 1.096 meters. Awesome. So it looks like we got to do some handy dandy trig. This is the, we have the adjacent sine and hypotenuse. So that's going to be inverse cosine of 1.096 over 1.2. And I got, where is that on my good old paper? 
Cool, I got 24 degrees for my final answer for D. Let's go ahead and go through the root. Okay, so for this problem, you get, it's out of three points total, so you're gonna get one point for using conservation of energy ideas for this. You're gonna also get one point for when you plug in 1.44 meters per second or Z volt, that is also worth one point. Isn't that fun? Cool. The last way you get a point is for recognizing that height is 0 0.104 meters, um, and then also recognizing this is 1.096 meters for your solving purposes. They don't care about the final answer in this. So that's kind of nifty about the AP. If all your other stuff is good, you're going to be in business. Cool. Let's go ahead and go on to our last part. Okay. Sorry, my screen's kind of funky right now, but we'll just roll with it. We're almost done here. Okay. So now let's see. The block thing continues to swing as a simple pendulum. So we are a good old block with the dart, et cetera, in it. So the time between when the dart collides with the blocks at this moment, so it goes up here, and then when the block first returns to its original position right there. So it would go up there, go back, go here, and then back. And that would be one complete period. So the time from where it started to when it goes back to its original position after like a full cycle of motion. Okay. So this right here, if we look at this, this is just going to represent one half of a period, whatever that is. So they're telling us it's a simple pendulum, which it is. This string right here is massless. Um, so let's think about it. What is our equation for this period of a simple pendulum? That is just going to be 2 pi square root of L over G. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. Um, L is 1.2. And again, I always use G as 10. It's easier for my calculations, but you can use 9.8. That's technically a little more exact. I get um, 2.17 seconds when I plug that all in. So now I only need half a period. So what? One half of T is just going to be one half of 2.17, which is which is just 1.085, which I'm going to round to 1.09 seconds. Awesome. So rubric for this, it is just out of two points for this part. Uh, you're going to get one point if you use the correct L, so 1.2, in a correct equation for the period of a simple pendulum. So you get one point for that. And then you'll get one point if you recognize that you need to divide the period by two. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and go on to the last part. So now let's go ahead and look at F. Okay, so second experiment. So a dart with more mass is launched at the same speed and angle. Collides with a stick and sticks to the wood. So with the angle, the dart and the block swing to increase, decrease, or stay the same. Again, if you have something like this on an AP, you run short of time, just check what, check a random guess, because, hey, you have at least a 33% chance of getting it right. So let's see. There's more mass at the beginning, but same speed. So more mass at the beginning means there's more momentum. So afterwards, there'll be more momentum. So the velocity of the dart and block is going to be greater. If the velocity is greater, it can swing to a whole greater angle. So that is going to be increased. So we'll put a little check for increase. Uh, let's think about this one. So for two, with the period of oscillation after the collision, increase, decrease, or stay the same. So again, our equation for a period is 2 pi root L over G. The length is not changing or acceleration due to gravity. Mass is not in this equation at all, so the period is not going to be changed at all. That's going to be stay the same. This whole thing is worth going to be worth four points. So it is going to be one point for checking the correct bonds for each of these, and then one point for correct justification for each of these. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Um, last little thing, just so you can kind of see where it is. This is my AP score rubric. So if you're getting between nine and 15 points on this, I say that's around an AP score of five. If you get around seven to eight points, that's about a four. Five to six points, I think of a three. Around four points is about a two. Uh, and zero to three points, I say is around a one. Um, and again, that's just my own rubric. Um, so take that or leave that, however, but it's just an approximation. So you kind of know what your AP score would be. Cool, thanks for watching.